Hi, I'm Jeff Ray, your host for Economic Outlook. We're glad you've joined us. If you're a regular viewer, welcome back. If you're new, we hope you make plans to join us each week as we bring you stories about the people and the companies and the communities driving economic growth in our region. School lunches, plans for highways, congressional seats, support for firefighters and families in need, census results affect your community every day. It's time again to count as we do every 10 years. We'll fill you in on why this count is so important and why it's critical for you and your family to participate coming up on Economic Outlook. The 2020 Census will provide a snapshot of our nation, who we are, where we live, and much more. The 2020 Census will determine a congressional representation, inform hundreds of billions of dollars of federal funding, and provide data that will impact communities for the next decade. We're focusing on Census 2020. Joining me for that conversation are Chris Dressel, a planner with the City of South Bend, and Larry Maliazzi, the Executive Director of the St. Joseph County Area Planning Commission. Guys, thanks for uh, being here. I appreciate the really important topic, especially uh, given our timing. Census Day is, is, is coming up, up soon. Let's talk, though, for maybe some historical context. Talk a little bit about just history and origin of the census and why we do it. Well, the very first census was in 1790. And the, the prime purpose back then was, uh, obviously, we had a newly formed government back then. And uh, this was a method for the government and the states to determine how many folks uh, there were and then how many representatives to send to, to the new government. Okay, it's particularly, obviously, the House of Representatives. Uh, so uh, every 10 years, the census conducts uh, this uh, uh, count to reapportion uh, the states and the House of Representatives. Uh, uh, the census has also become a lot more important in those decades uh, as the country developed. Uh, businesses found that it would be of use to know the demographics of the populations that they were trying to sell their goods to and where they lived. And then, of course, as uh, a lot more federal dollars were made available and special programs, uh, social programs were established, then the census provided the data to be able to fund those programs. Great. So, so Chris, in your role in, in, in the city, for example, this is, some of this data and, and such is important. It's really critical to the city. Talk a little bit about why, why it's such an important thing uh, for, for somebody like you or for the community. Sure. Well, what it does is it helps us know how to respond to the different geographies depending on the population in each and what is the nature of those populations, what kind of needs they need in terms of those federal dollars and the federal programs that they assist, whether it be in the areas of uh, health care, uh, child care, uh, education, uh, road construction, um, and other sort of key uh, needs for the community in terms of different demographics. So we're, we know where these, where these persons live and we know how to react to them and, the, and these uh, individual uh, places get their allocations and that sets the identity of the standard for the community again for that next decade. So that's why it's so important to get it right and to be able to, to serve the community with, with these dollars um, in addition to getting the, the proper representation in Congress. Uh, over those over those next ten years, you know it's interesting why you, you mentioned Congress because because uh, the one of the suggestions I heard was uh, maybe the states around us, in particular uh, Michigan and Ohio and Illinois, all maybe are on tap to lose representatives, and and, and I hear in particular in those communities how important this count is, um, you know, for that purpose. Well, that that's true. Uh, I believe it was uh, two censuses ago that Indiana lost a representative, uh, and obviously. Uh, for every state to lose a representative, that's a little less uh, power, I suppose you could uh, couch it in. Um, we know there are states that have lost population over the years. I believe California is one of those, some of the western states. And of course, through the decades, uh, the southern states have, have increased their, their population, so they've gained representatives. So you can tell in a broad national manner how the power, the political power shifts from you know, west coast to southeast coast. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's very important 
for, uh, for our population to consider that because that's their voice in the government. So, you, you know, they, they need to fill out the forms so they're counted to ensure that at the minimum their state at least maintains their, their representation. So, 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 you know, we, we talk about the need and we, uh, we share this, uh, you know, billions of dollars of uh, funding decisions are made ba based on census. Um, is it hard to get people to, to do this, to, to fill out the form? Well, I think what we, what we try to do is sort of set out a schedule that spends a lot of time sort of trying to provide this kind of information, this background. Because what we find is even those that have diligently filled out their forms for decades don't really have a more than maybe a basic conception of what it, what it means. So, so we're, in order to go after those that are um, more, more difficult to count or those that are historically undercounted, we start to layer all of these important things out. And one of the one of the messages that we use is, you know, the census is uh, important, safe, and easy. So that we, we put that emphasis on the important, talking about uh, the redistricting that occurs, talking about the federal dollars, and talking about the information, and then the decisions that the communities make based upon all all of that, um, and it lets us let's go ahead. So. We have to say it's important, and that's really, I think that, that can be, a, in our case, can be a six month to a one year process, just, just layering that out and going to um, sort of those intermediate audiences. So sometimes it works best with the more familiar groups to those communities and neighborhoods that they get their information from on a more regular basis, trying to work with these groups and form a, a partnership or a coalition uh, to help us move forward to get to the actual period that we're entering now where the information, the census information is out there, the, the, the invite has been sent, it's, it's with the households. And, uh, but without that pre-story and that backstory, sometimes it, you know, it's sort of necessary, it's a necessary two-step process. Okay, I, okay. Yeah, yeah, if I can add to that, so, uh, I mean, confidentiality has is, is, is been an issue every, every census. And, uh, you know, we encourage folks uh, to, to go to the census website uh, so they can feel comfortable that uh, the census data is absolutely confidential. They can go online and see that there have been several court cases and attempts by, by various government agencies over the past to gain personal level data and that's always been turned down and refused. Uh, so it, uh, that data is, uh, is locked in, your, your name, and other personal information that you may fill out on the form, that's locked tight for 72 years. And it has, uh, to, to this date, none of that's ever been released or exposed until, again, 72 years after the fact. So now we're, the census records from 72 years ago are, are, getting, are, are readily available. I, I think that's a great point. I think that uh, as I hear any pushback at something, it's, it's the, Big Brother and government has all this right. information, and somehow they'll use it use it against me. So that's, a, I think, a great point uh, to mm -hmm. make. So um, I, I want to follow up, maybe Chris, on something you were talking about for a, se a second. So, um, so we're right ahead of Census Day, April first of, mm -hmm. of 2020. Um, but a lot of um, a lot of ac work goes into building up um, to that date and preparing this. So, so you know, talk about what's happening in those times when there's not a census to sort of get ready for. Um, for that time when they actually do the count. Sure, our our participation in a in a formal sense is that we're we're pledging to support the census by forming a complete count committee. Um, and in this case, CS Health Bend and St. Joe County work together in in our complete count committee. And so by doing that, we're we're telling the census early on that we're going to be here with by sharing information, um, bringing together partners and uh, communities, uh, neighborhoods, and then providing other logistical needs that, that they, might be, they might need. So we're doing that probably about a year in advance. And the additional uh, support that we've gotten from the census this year is other than, you know, outside of the, the local governments being uh, complete count committees, there are a number of community-based complete count committees that the census has worked with to sort of serve in their, have their own direct relationship with the census that we work with as well to help work, again, these, these audiences, they sort of serve to this question of how can we get more of trusted voices involved in this process, where they, the information, um, instead of in the cases where people are 
maybe there's some skepticism or some uncertainty uh, sharing this information or, or answering these type of questions um, can be alleviated because they're working with these, these trusted partners or trusted voices. And so uh, in the case of the city of South Bend, you know, we've moved forward with a campaign that involves some very tangible, uh, high visibly, high, highly visible items um, in the form of billboards and uh, public service announcements um, that we're putting out in targeted areas in terms of these, again, these pop, these geographic areas where there's been a determination that there's a difficulty to count where they've been historically undercounted. And that was a sort of a framework that the census put together in the case of what we call this mail back or now a self-response period. So where there was a response of 70% or less uh, in terms of within a census track, those had been identified as these areas that need the extra assistance. So that's what we can do best. We have a limited number of resources, so we know that we can move ahead in these areas by boosting the message that the broader message that the census is offering and then working with these community groups and themselves as, as being other complete count committees. What's happening or what's some important things that we should be aware of this month? Well, by this time, your viewers uh, should have uh, received or will start to receive uh, a postcard in their mailboxes uh, inviting them to fill out their census form. Uh, this is the first time that the census is going to have, uh, have uh, be able to have that done online. Okay, so there'll be a, a special link on your postcard that'll take you to your, your personalized uh, form. And uh, so you can fill out online, you can fill it out uh, on your phone, I believe there's gonna be an app to that, and then um, uh, eventually uh, uh, perhaps by, by paper too. So, uh, so this will, has already started, and uh, you may get a couple of reminders, um, and that will kind of go you know, past, Mar past the end of March a little bit, um, and then from there, uh, you want to fill in the rest of it? Sure. Um, these, are the, yeah, these early options are going to be key to uh, getting, getting a, a quicker response and uh, give us the opportunity to you know, get, the, get the information in fairly real time where we can see the responses are, are coming in um, sufficiently or, or maybe lagging behind. And the other option, that, that early option that the census can provide is, is a phone response. So on these invitations, You'll have that information and, and then theoretically you could respond immediately uh, once you get that invite to participate. Now some areas are going to have a different uh, approach where in addition to an invite they'll actually get a standard form. Um, it's not going to happen for all but some will. Um, and you will have an option to request a form again through the, through the, by calling the phone number. So all three of those options will be available to you um, uh, fairly quickly. But there is a, a desire by the census to get uh, as many people uh, as possible, many households as possible to respond on, uh, online or by phone. So when we get to census day, which is, that, is the reference date um, for, for counting um, the persons uh, in your households um, by that day, we then move in, into April and there will still be the availability of, of all three of those self-response options, but as the month um, begins to, to close out, that's when the Census Bureau uh, will do a sort of an assessment of where the need is to, to bring out census takers to do the door-to-door -door activity. And that's not meant in any ways to be a penalty, it's just an extra way to assist. So by May 1st, um, that, that particular development will be in place, uh, but concurrently you can continue to respond uh, by the, uh, the online phone and uh, form options. Um, that process where the, the census takers will be doing the door-to-door -door activities and there could be multiple visits, they'll be providing something at your door if they were unable to reach you, that is expected to continue um, maybe all the way till July 31st. And, and that's the date where, where it's, uh, that the, the census process will be through. Uh, beyond that, you know, those tabulations will be taking place by the census and they are then um, uh, required to deliver uh, that those count information to to the White House to the president's desk by the end of 2020 by December 31st. So great. So a, a lot on the agenda here. Let me ask you a couple of questions. That, you know, prompted from that. You know, I, I feel like I remember historically there was kind of a long form 
short form is 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 are we all filling out the same form or do do some do we collect additional information on some how how does that how does that work these days yeah it's the same it's the same form Every, yeah, yeah the, the the long form um, essentially is not going to be there yeah. so it's just the same form yep. one form um, and um, it should be shorter uh, it should be a little clearer uh, asking very basic questions mm -hmm. your your name your phone number um, names and uh, all the people in the household the relationship yeah. the sex of, uh, of the folks in the household um, and um, uh, so it, sh it should be quick and easy yep. okay it's designed to be that yep. again it's an effort uh, again to go back to the history of the census to to get people to trust the census uh, and um, to express to them it's, it's important for us to get this information so we're keeping it simple and um, uh, you know to fill the form out Great. No, I, I, I could speak to, I use the data, I feel like, all the time and how valuable it is to have this. So I'm really excited about this effort to collect it. Um, because of our marketplace, a lot of college students in the area, probably 40,000 enrolled at local colleges. W w what happens on the, on the college student space? Are they doing census? Is mom and dad doing census back at home? Is there a little bit of both? Any idea how that's handled? Well, when it comes to so college students, those living on campus, that's, that's addressed uh, for direct, directly by the university in a relationship they have with the census. So that, that'll be a count where it's not necessarily everyone's going to get their own uh, form. Those will be, it'll be coordinated in more of a, of a group quarter effort. When it comes to those living off campus, yes, those uh, in an off campus situation would be counted where they're going to school, mm -hmm. uh, not, not at their home location. So that would be, uh, they would each, you know, each person like any other household would be required uh, to fill out a census form. Great. Uh, no, I, I think that's helpful just as we're, you know, trying to learn this. So um, both of you have been involved in these before. How is, uh, and, and I think Larry mentioned just the technology, this online, this trying to make it easier for folks. How, how has um, technology um, influenced uh, how this is done? Well, as, as mentioned previously, obviously you can go online now. You can use your computer, you can use your phone. Um, and uh, that that's that should be a game changer, especially for for the younger generation, um, and the fact that you can do this now wherever you are. Okay, you don't have to wait for that paper form to come in, uh, fill it out, and, and then stick it in the mail. Uh, so that's that's really big. The other thing that's changed for us, and we were just talking about this before the show, is that we'll have the ability to actually get the response rates. And I think Chris touched on this a little bit on a daily basis. So for example, in, in Chris's case, he's, he's got some hard to count neighborhoods, traditionally hard to count neighborhoods. He'll be able to spot uh, the response rate from, from a census tract in that neighborhood. So if let's say there's 100 households in that neighborhood and after the third week, only 40 of them responded, then uh, you know Chris or the social providers that, that have clients in the neighborhood can reach out, the Census Bureau can uh, maybe start uh, galvanizing their, their, their forces to go out and go to door to door. So um, that's, that's really technology that can hopefully get us a, a little better count than 10 years ago. Great. I think your, your question is a good one. Uh, was the other point to bring up in terms of technology is really sort of a little bit outside the, the, the parameter of the census, but it's just the availability of information in general and the availability of disinformation. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we're um, trying to, we don't, we don't see, we don't see it's a, a strong a strain of it happening in, in local communities, but we know that there's a, a variety of news sources where, where, where the information is, is put out regarding the census, and we've, again, going back to this trusted voices concept, want to make sure that we're not always, we know that we're not always the best source for information, and we want to know that that's reinforced by others, so if there is, um, some rumor or, or disinformation that's circulating, you know, we can uh, know that we can work with our partners to help uh, correct um, that, where that's coming from and, uh, and know that uh, we have, you know, the, you know, sort of assert where the census is important and where, you know, why it is also safe and, and easy. So. Great. So in our last minute or so, so, you know, it's our final chance to make the case, convince folks there. Uh, j just help them, uh, help them understand the, real quick again why they, why they sh should do it and where they should go to get additional information if they want to learn more about it. 
Well, uh, census.gov, census2020.gov. Uh, there's also an Indiana website uh, that you can link to. Um, so if, if I recall correctly, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's about representation, all right? We, you don't want your state to lose representation, uh, which is a direct link to, uh, to the voice you have uh, you know, through the federal government. It's about money, okay? If you are on any kind of uh, program uh, that's supported by federal and state dollars. Um, this is what determines how much money your particular uh, area gets, your state gets to service you and, and the folks in the same situation as you are. Uh, so, uh, and then for the, um, you know, f f for the medical industry and, and the businesses related to that, uh, you know, for them to know what, um, what the demographics of the region are could perhaps uh, get better services to you. Great. Guys, thank you so much. Really appreciate your talk about this. Pretty important day coming up. Thanks for helping us understand it, it better. Yeah. That's it for our show today. Thank you for watching. To watch this episode again or any of our past episodes, you can find Economic Outlook at WNIT.org. We also encourage you to like us on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. I'm Jeff Ray. I'll see you next week. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.